This morning we're going to focus on health, but we'll do a, a quick update of City Connects and then talk about the more general issue of how do you integrate health into this broad category that nobody seems to have a solid definition for, but we all know what it is. It's supporting students, particularly with respect to the out-of-school factors that we know impact kids and um, families living in particularly circumstances of poverty. Um, so our update, um, the uh, implementation of City Connects, it went on the ground in 2001 um, with shaky legs. Um, now it's in 17 Boston schools. We're still in the original schools. The old, what, there's no longer clusters in Boston, but those of you who are as old as I am remember cluster five and cluster two. And um, this year, um, we moved into um, six new schools. And obviously, and this is the data that's so helpful when you think about the work that you do. The national data now says all of school factors contribute 67% of the variance in the achievement um, outcomes. So the achievement gap, 67% of it, is accounted for by out-of-school factors. 33% by in-school factors, which is obviously curriculum and instruction. If that's not in place and that's not top shelf, then we can do little addressing the out-of-school factors. But the fact is that out-of-school factors contribute a significant amount. If anybody wants the references for these, we can give it to you. This one you all know since you were five years old, and that is basically that children are whole human beings and they come to school with social, emotional, health, family, and academic needs. And while this morning we concentrate on the health piece, it's all of those pieces that um, need to be addressed. These are the schools that we went into this past September. Um, these are all so-called turnaround schools, and I think you all know the definition of those. Um, there are six on that list, and um, we're now in 25% of Boston's public, reaching 25% of the public elementary school students. Um, the Mass Department of Education, we were really thrilled um, included us as one of the models uh, in the, their race to the top application, which I think you know was successful. Um, and as of 2010, we were collaborating with, in one way or another, with 208 community partners. Um, and some of our community partners, if you say, who's the City Connects person that you collaborate with your school, in your school, they say, or in the schools that you're in, I don't know. But I know Rebita, or I know Kathy, or I know Kristen. It's almost like the people on the ground become such good partners that the, the kind of background um, piece of this uh, isn't even present, which is perfectly fine. We just want to be able to do the work. Um, as you know, the one thing a university can bring to a conversation is a lot of capacity in research. And so one of the things we were determined to do from the beginning, and the principals wanted, was show us the evidence that addressing the out-of-school factors with children and families really makes a difference. And that's where we had some strength. We had a deep bench in the research. And um, this is just a little. If you go to our website, cityconnects.com or org, that tells you what it tells you. Um, if you go to the website, the whole um, research report is posted and you can get it. But this gives you a little insight. Addressing the out-of-school factors, look at the state MCAS outcomes. That's the yellow line. That's the whole state. That's Wellesley, Weston, Boston, Worcester, uh, all of the state, Cambridge. And then look at our comparison schools, which are in Boston, and look at Boston overall is the green line, and look what happens with the City Connects um, kids who get their out-of-school factors addressed in the particular way that we do it in City Connects. And what you see is 
they begin to pull away from the group. And um, as they get into six, seven, and eight, where the intervention isn't. In other words, it's the old theory you read in your developmental psych books. If you do it when they're young, the results will, you'll reap the benefit as they get older. And there's math. Um, we see the likelihood that a child will be retained after they leave the city, even in the City Connects intervention schools, but after they leave, the likelihood that they'll be retained is much lower in the City Connect schools. And what you see there in grade nine, that's a big predictor for drop-up if kids are retained, especially in six, seven, and eight. So if we can reduce their being so-called kept back or retained in grade, we're reducing one of the factors that contributes to drop-up. Um, we just completed a planning year with the city of Springfield with the help of the State Department of Education. And next year, we're going to be in six turnaround schools in um, Springfield. And we're really excited about that. It's going to be a challenge. Two hours on the Mass Pike is a challenge. But we have wonderful people out there. And um, they are able to come, and we're able to go. So that um, seems to be a pretty um, exciting. It is a pretty exciting opportunity for us. And um, some of you may have heard us crying um, about last May, May June. Um, and we literally were crying all over the city. And we were crying because we applied, as many of your agencies did, for one of the I-3 grants. And we applied in the validation category, which is up to 30 million. And we were going to do a randomized control trial in Worcester and Springfield and Boston area. And we missed it by being the next one to get it. If they had given out one more grant, we would have been there. They gave out 15, and we were number 16. Um, and we missed it because our score, when they scored these things, it was 93.65. And the guy on top of us, I assume it was a guy, was 93.76. So 11 one hundredths of a point stood between us and that. But it's all right. We stopped crying um, and moved on. And we were actually thrilled to get that close. Because it's tough if you don't have a lot of political. So where are we with increasing um, our integration of health into student support? And this is some of the data that we pulled over the last three years, just so you could get a sense. That if you look at the yellow line there, there are really four buckets of major strengths and needs that we use to look at kids and their pattern of strengths and needs. And the four buckets are, obviously, their academic instructional needs, behavioral, social, emotional <coughs> needs, health medical needs, and family. And it's needs and strengths in all those areas. But if you look at just needs in this, in 2010, with a really strong focus on health, we worked hard on health this year, recognizing health needs, because sometimes it's hard to recognize them in in children in school settings. You don't always know there's an earache, but you don't always know about a, a medical condition. The school nurse does, but the rest of us don't always. And so um, we worked really hard, particularly collaborating with the nurses in the building. And what we see is up to, this data was as of January, because we have to pull the data from the data system. But as of January, 15% of the recognized needs in children or in health. And interestingly, as we look at the, the needs assessment data from the city of Springfield, one principal out of six said the top need in her building was health care. The top need. You know, the, the, many of them said it was the second or the third, and academic was first. She's saying, look, health is such a need, health care for these children. It's my number one. Um, the types of health services, and again, we group them into buckets. The physical activity and sports for a lot of children. We see a real increase in the number of services that we were able to offer. Health curricular programs, and um, we did not include here 
with the work that we were doing in the schools with the health curriculum. But you see that by 2010-11, there's much more activity going on in, in the schools we're in around health education and getting, and a lot of it is coming, as you'll see later, from community agencies that are doing different, making different health education um, efforts in the schools. And then the health medical services is still low, but it's certainly on the, moving in the right direction. And again, it's how to get that recognition. We're not trained as school counselors, school social workers, um, to look at health needs. There's no biology course after freshman 101. All of us may have had an anatomy course when we were sophomores, and that's it in terms of health, except what our own you know, reading or whatever. So we've done a lot to try to help our coordinators recognize health needs. Um, and that's um, particularly with the help of the school nurses is coming. But the percentage of services delivered up to January of this year, for this year, in the area of health was almost 25%. It was 22% of the services. So what you see is if we can highlight and focus on this, and the first thing is obviously to recognize the need. Obesity is the big one that's au courant today and critical, but there are multiple health needs, so it just can't be a one issue um, focus. But you can see that gradually um, the schools we're in are beginning to recognize um, more and more beyond the school nurse the health needs of the students. This one is really interesting. What's the percentage of health services delivered at the school versus delivered at the community agencies? Um, this doesn't mean by the school. This means at the school. And those of you from the community agencies know that you truck to a lot of schools. You go to schools to deliver your services in the schools. Um, which has really been a shift over the years that we've seen from the days when all the services were out there and the school was here and it was hard to make the link. Now we're seeing many more agencies delivering services in the school. Not during the literacy period, not during the math period. It can be during the after school program, it can be at lunch, whatever. But what we're seeing now is that um, with respect to physical activity and sports, 92% up to January were at the school. The health curriculum, obviously, were at the school. And the health medical services were, um, these were delivered at the school. We know that there are gazillions of medical services delivered outside of the school setting. Of course there are. It's just that we don't know about them. So what you see here is what we're able to know. Do we know that kids and families go to clinics and hospitals and physicians all over this city? Of course, but this is documentable. And as you know, we don't do anything like call a family and say, tell us you know, where you go for your medical services, et cetera, et cetera. But obviously, the direct health medical services. We also know that nurses in school buildings do a lot more than 91% um, uh, of the um, services, that they do a lot more service at the school than that we document, because documentation is really a problem. If we have the luxury of following the school nurse around every day and document everything she did, then we'd see, I think, a different set of numbers. But here's the interesting slide. The, the services provided at, by the school, by the district, and we know this is gradually beginning to increase, I mean, we know for a number of years, schools had to reduce these services because they didn't have the resources. But we see 11% of the sports physical activities that we have been able to document provided by the school and 89% provided by the community agencies. So it means community agencies are going to schools to deliver more of their services. And again, please know, that this is what we're able to document. I don't want to be under any illusion up here that this reflects the absolute reality in the city. It doesn't. But if you put somebody in a school and you say, document as much as you can, this is what we see. 
um, the school this year provided about a third of the health curricula or health education programs and the community agencies provided about 64 um, percent and then the health medical service this would be the school nurse provided about 63 and community agencies about 37. so that difference between where the service gets delivered and who delivers the services is a crucial distinction. And as a matter of fact, what we see in the city is the, from 2008 to 2010, far more partnerships between schools and agencies where the agencies are able to come into the school in whatever time zone the school uh, works out with them. Um, this year, uh, with our school site coordinators are collaborating with nurses when they do the whole class review. Uh, and this is the data that we collect. Um, they consult with the nurse often before the teacher meetings. They are able to look at um, printouts of data on each student from the school nurse, just so they will know. Now, we have to be exceedingly careful of HIPAA regulations, and we're very conscious of that. Um, they often can have a conversation with the nurse about a particular child after the whole class, a child the nurse may not be aware of, as an acts a teacher may know, a coordinator may know. Um, they often have daily meetings in the school with the school nurse. And some, in some of our schools, the nurses are able to attend the whole class reviews. So there's a lot more integration around the health medical needs. Um, and when we surveyed principals, um, here's what they told us last year. Their schools were healthier environments because there was a health education program. In our case, it was the New Balance Health Ed program where we used a number of different curricula, um, but principals liked that. And this, frankly, is in contrast to 2002-03 when we started, where this was new in the schools to have health education every week, and um, it was new to principals and teachers at that time anyway. 92% um, of the principals um, thought City Connects, because we were asking them about that, was helpful and impacting. 85% of the principals um, thought that the New Balance program had a positive impact. And 100% of the principals, and this is important, believe that the City Connects infrastructure and work impacted the climate of their schools. This is not, this morning, to give you data and wave a flag for City Connects by any stretch of the imagination. This is to say that if schools and community agencies figure out how to take care of our city's children together, it does work. Um, and we just happen to be an infrastructure that's working. There could be many other varieties of this. So um, for what you do in um, collaborating with our particular infrastructure, City Connects, to make this happen, we are always enormously appreciative. Your partners in the school tell us all the time, the City Connects coordinators, about um, the, the absolute collaboration they have from agencies and what a difference that makes in getting work done for children. Um, and those of you in the schools, I know there's several people from the schools here. Um, it is, uh, we've turned a huge corner in this city, I believe, around this essential collaboration. So it's good news um, for all of us. And if any of this data, if you want any more of it, if it's useful for you in applying for your grants, it's not about your agency in particular, but it's about the work of agencies in general and the work of schools, um, we are happy to share. And we also will give you references for anything that you saw here. Um, thank you very much.